Do you come over the top? It's a common issue for many golfers and a major source of frustration. Hi, I'm Eric Jones, PGA professional and world long drive champion. One of the reasons the over the top move is so frustrating is that you could just as easily hit a dead pull left as you could a big slice right and you have no idea which one is going to show up. The other reason it's frustrating is that it seems so hard to cure. If you're coming over the top, I'd like to give you a couple of things to look for in your swing and then suggest a method you could use to create the swing you want. An over the top move means that your hands and your club move well above the plane. Your hands are way outside the plane and your shaft gets very vertical. Your angle of approach to the ball is very steep as you come in. Instead of staying on plane, the hands come out over the plane and the club comes with it. Most golfers try to fix their over the top swing by addressing their downswing directly, trying to drop their hands or lower their shoulders or flatten their club angle. The reason none of these fixes work is because the over the top move is a symptom. There's something else going on in a different part of the swing that's causing your over the top move. It's what I call the root cause. You can't treat a symptom and expect it to go away without treating the root cause. So what is the root cause of your over the top move? As is so often the case with significant swing issues, there are actually two causes. One mechanical and one mental. From a mechanical standpoint, one of the most common root causes for the over the top move is because the lower body is not in a position to initiate the downswings. If I allow my back knee to slide to the right, flat over my foot, or even worse, to the outside, or locked up straight, I've lost my leverage position. From here, I can't push off the right foot to get my weight into the left side. The only thing I can do from this position is throw my upper body at the ball. If you address the mechanical root cause by maintaining your leverage on the inside part of the ball of your right foot, you're halfway home. The second half of the equation has to do with your intention. Is it your intention to hit the ball or to move the ball to a target? It's an important distinction because your intention will determine your body orientation at impact. This is the mental side of the root cause and it's just as critical as the mechanical side, maybe even more so because sometimes changing your intention will improve your mechanics. When the focus of your swing is on the ball rather than the target, you accelerate to the ball and your body will orient itself to the ball. You feel like you're throwing the club at the ball. If, on the other hand, you've got a target focus rather than a ball focus, your body will orient itself to the target rather than to the ball, you'll have continuous rotation through the impact zone and you're going to hit it farther and straighter. So check out your swing to see if you have these two root cause issues. One, losing your leverage on the backswing by allowing your weight to get flat over your right foot or even to the outside of the backswing. And two, focusing on hitting the ball rather than swinging through to the target. Here's a practice program that will help you to develop the swing you want. Practice these two drills, the knee set drill and the upper and arm connection drill in five ball set rotations. Here's how to practice the knee set drill. The objective is to set your right knee at address and keep it from sliding backwards on the backswing. That will help you to keep your weight on the inside part of the right foot at the top of the backswing so you can push with your lower body to lead the downswing. First, find something that will give you a little bit of feedback. Buckets are pretty common around the range, so I'm going to use one of those. Take your address position and then move the bucket to the outside part of your right foot, back towards the heel. Make your backswing and allow your right knee to pivot as you do your weight shift, but don't let your right knee slide backwards. If you do, you're going to be able to feel the bucket. You'll tip the bucket. If your knee stays in position, then at the top of your backswing, you're going to feel your weight on the inside part of your right foot. That's your leverage position. With a little practice, you'll quickly get the feel of using your leverage position to initiate the downswing. If you feel your leg hit the bucket on the backswing, stop, Go back to your address position 
and do it again until you can make this turn and this pivot without hitting the bucket. The upper arm connection drill is a mechanical drill that can help keep the arms and the core connected throughout the swing. But we're going to use it to work on our target focus. Grab a towel and put it across your chest under your armpits. Keep your upper arms slightly in front of your chest rather than on the sides. You're going to make a half swing, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, keeping consistent pressure on the towel throughout the swing. What we're going to add to this drill is target awareness. What I'd like you to imagine is, where is your breastbone pointing? To get a visual of what I mean, I'm going to hold the shaft against my breastbone at a 90 degree angle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my half swing and I'm going to use the visual of where my club is pointed to help me get a sense for where my breastbone is pointed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to turn that to my target. When you start this swing and do this drill, you want to connect to your target here in the middle of your chest. Feel yourself turn away from the target and then turn breastbone towards the target. This is the critical part of this drill. Before you swing, you need to stare at your target long enough so that you form a sort of connection between the target and your, chip and your breastbone. The towel will help keep your arms and body connected so that you can make a continuous turn to the target. It won't take you long to feel the difference between a swing that has a ball focus and a swing that has a target focus. And what you'll find is that the target center swing is easier, more natural, and a lot more accurate. So a really good practice session will have one five ball set when you're working on the right knee set, one five ball set where you're working on the upper arm connection with the target focus. And then you go back and start over, do another five ball set on the knee, another five ball set on the target connection, and then one five ball set of normal golf swings and see what's happening in your swing. Remember that making a swing change is a process and you'll need to repeat this kind of practice regimen on a regular basis over time in order to develop the new habit of swinging on plane.